Good morning, everyone. Good morning. What a nice buzz in the air, nice energy this morning in the church. So great to see you, and happy summer. You know, uh, summertime, times of vacations and travels, people coming, people going. Sometimes we have people visiting us for their vacation. Isn't that cool? Sometimes we have special events going on in the life of the church, like a baptism. No matter where you've come from this morning, whether it be you've been here regularly all through the summer, or you're just back, you're getting ready to go, or maybe you're visiting, just know that you are welcomed here. And we're so glad that you wanted to be with us this morning, and so appreciative of you being a part of our worship experience. And we hope that after church this morning ends, that you head down to the, sanct to the fellowship hall, which is kind of uh, down to the right as we leave the sanctuary here, where we have our fresh coffee and donuts and tea and juice and goodies, and some of the nicest people that you'll ever get to meet. So come on by and join us after church this morning for our social time. We're so glad to have you do that. Um, it's great to be back. I had a little time off too, and, and like I say, you know, there's no such thing as a, as a, a too long of a vacation, but there is such a thing as coming back to work too soon. <laughs> Because, boy, I tell you, when I got back, I heard about lights and sound and air conditioning and things happening and, you know, such is, such is life, such is life. But I think, we're, I think we're all good to go this morning. I certainly feel that way myself, and I've taken a few extra laps around the uh, bulletin and the church to kind of catch up on what's been going on. Hopefully you have as well. First, for example, signing in. We do that. If you're along the center row, you guys in the center aisle should find the uh, pew pads to sign in. That's a regular part of our morning tradition. Let us know you're here. Uh, don't forget, too, that uh, as you get into the worship this morning and you start to think about the things that are on your heart for prayers, that you lift up your prayer concerns on these cards that we have attached to the bottom of our prayer card. This is our prayer card every Sunday. If you're new to us, it goes simply a matter of just folding off that little part of the bottom and turning it into the offering plate or give it to the pastors. Uh, one of the ushers will make sure it gets to our prayer teams that way. It's very important in our church's life, these prayers. Uh, I couldn't help but notice a couple of things happened while I was gone. One of those is that a bunch of you volunteered to help take care of the church while we were in between custodians. I'm so impressed. You know, I saw the list the, uh, during the week. It was a lot longer than this. This is what's left on the list. This is just a few more jobs left. Somebody asked me about if they sign up and they stuck for the job for a while. No. <laughs> it is a temporary commitment to help us do things. Some of you have already been doing things, and we just so appreciate you helping you know, restock bathrooms and wipe down counters and, of course, take care of the main spaces like the Fellowship Hall and the Sanctuary. Thank you for lending your hands there. It means a lot to all of us. We are in between, in between the custodial activities, but here's the last of them. If you, if you have a chance to finish off this list this uh, morning. It'd be great. We'll turn those in. Norm Bryant's got a beautiful spreadsheet. We just love a good spreadsheet, don't we, Norm? You know, you get everything on there, and uh, we'll keep track of all those volunteer offers. Uh, this, the, the staff parish committee has been working behind the scenes diligently to finish up the custodial job description, which was done this week. So they're posting the job uh, tomorrow morning for a custodian. And if that's something that you, you are interested in or you know people might be interested in, uh, it's, it'll be available. The job description and the application will be available tomorrow, tomorrow morning, I'm told. So that's pretty exciting. It's a big step for the church to get that piece. You know, you can do without a lot of people, but you can't do very easily without a custodian. Amen. Amen. <laughs> do I hear an amen? Yes, I do. <laughs> so, so we're grateful for all the folks that have been working so hard to get that together. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In the uh, bulletin, too, I want to point out that there's an envelope, and it kind of is near and dear to my heart. Uh, anytime we have an all-church offering for the Methodist Church, there's about six of those a year. They're always kind of handled across the country, across the world. All the churches of the Methodist tradition will be doing this student day offering this morning. This one is particularly uh, pertinent to me, I guess. It's certainly personal, and that's because the guys that's being mentioned here, one of the testimonies and an example of the student day is a music student who wants to do the work of the Lord. And I tell you what, there was a day that I could relate to all of that. I'm getting old now, so it's a little harder. But uh, I still find my heart going out to the music students who have a love of both their, their music and, and the church. And here, this young man's testimony is a great one to read. So if you can make that offering today, we'll take it, of course, as well as any time during the week ahead so that we can turn that into the church, the annual church conference there in Nashville later next week. A couple of quick event announcements. The big one is the Luau. Did you get your tickets? Yeah, it's coming. It's, this is the annual. They do a wonderful feast and food and music and fun. And uh, it's a great day on Saturday, the 29th, here at church. Uh, the tickets are on sale. We're obviously needing to get tickets 
to, to you if you're going to participate. So consider being a part of that day, the 29th, this Saturday at noon. Uh, I was also asked to, what was the other thing? Oh, the, uh, Andrea, what did you tell me to talk about? This back to school drive, right? We talked about, see, there's a big box of it, because I guess this is the last week or so we're going to finish the collections. And so this is the week to, you know, when you're, when you're, how can you miss the school supplies? They're all at the stores right now. You go to a check stand, and there's like notebooks and pencils and other things that you could use for school. Uh, so grab something up, and, and we'll take it out to the living room uh, later in the next couple weeks. But this, this drive ends next week, so consider participating in the school drive. And then I want to make sure that you know about that singer's workshop coming up, because we've got to get those RSVPs done. We do, a, we do a singer's workshop to kick off the fall for the choir and any other singers in the church. Every year we do a singer's workshop out at the Two Rock Coast Guard base. We have a beautiful chapel that we go to out there. It feels very special, like, 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 like you're on a retreat for a day. This year we talked out of retirement, well, kind of a semi-retirement, a good friend of ours who's been in this town forever, as long as I can remember. His name is Dan Earl. You ever hear of Dan Earl? Yeah. yeah the great maestro of the Santa Rosa High School music program. He also is a huge member of our community in many ways as a music person. Uh, we talked to him about coming out and helping us kick off our year, and he agreed. He agreed to come and, and do that for us, and so we're excited to see Dan and have him with us. He's such a magician with music, and if you're a singer at all of any kind, want to be a singer, would like to be a part of this day, uh, the only cost to you is that you have to stay and eat lunch with us for free. <laughs> How's that for a deal? There is such a thing as a free lunch, in certain places anyway. <laughs> got to sign up, though, because to get you on the base, at the Coast Guard base, we've got to get you on the list. The list is very important to us. Well, that's just, they won't let you on without it because it's a security clearance matter. So anyway, uh, let us know if you're interested. We'll get you signed up for that, no problem. Hopefully you'll have a few other things on your minds that you want to mention or think about or that's part of your church life. And if you see them in here, uh, take a look through it. If you haven't seen them in there, let us know and we'll find out about them for you as well. It's great to be together. I hope you're ready to lift up your voice. We've got a, a great opening song, a song of faith and a great song of melody. It's number 149. Cantemos al Señor. Let's sing unto the Lord. Shall we stand? Doug skipped over while I'm getting my papers ready I'm going to tell you is that the luau benefits the United Methodist Women Mission Work 
So it's not only fun and delicious, it's worthwhile. Okay. I'm Peg Farrell. And um, just, we're going to be quick today, so don't worry about that. <clears throat> right, Pastor? <laughs> he didn't give us much time. So anyway, I, we're here to talk about, briefly, um, the annual conference that we attended in June, along with Pastor Blake, Pastor Lindsay, Pastor Sokove, Pastor Current. Woo! Was it a blast? Yeah. And, well, and Mary Ponajesi. Don't, I, I'm getting to that. Sorry. All right. <laughs> anyway, we do have three lay members to our annual conference. Mary Pony Jossi spoke to those who attended the 8 o'clock service this morning. And then Mike and I are here for you today. So our presentations will be short, just the highlights of a few things. But if anybody does have some questions or want to get together with us, please let us know. If you want more information or have some questions, we're happy to meet with your group, commission, whatever, or on a one-to-one -one basis. So that's part of our job, and we gladly accept that. So this year's theme, I feel like I need to kind of stand like this. Is that right? I don't know. I'm a little funny. Okay. Can you hear me? All right. So this year's theme was testify to love, your story matters. And um, I wasn't real sure what that was going to be about, but as I studied before the conference and um, looked at all the resolutions and tried to figure that out and looked at the budget and saw who was going to be speaking and um, listen to you know what was going to go on and then we got to the um, conference and oh my gosh it's always jam-packed with everything and um, plenary sessions and wonderful worship services and um, voting on this and that and hearing speakers it's it's a really a jam-packed four days so anyway but what the bottom line was for me was that people were actually testifying to their faith and to the love of God for us, and their stories really did matter to me. And that's what I want to share with you, is just a couple of, a few of the people that really made a difference to me, and, and either made me proud of them, or um, made me think, and really gave me hope for the United Methodist Church. The first person I want to talk about just briefly is Pastor Minerva, I mean, Bishop, gosh, Bishop. Minerva Con... Oh, I have to look. Carcano. Oh, my gosh. She's little. She's soft-spoken. But what a dynamo. Powerhouse. This woman is smart. She knows finances, John. She and Greg, if you're in the room. Um, she is lovely. And she started out the conference by telling us that she pledged to us to love us, faithfully pray for us, stand by us in growth and struggle, suffering. And she exalted us. She told us she longed to know us. And honestly, when she speaks, she means it. So take that into your hearts. She's on our side, whatever that is. And if you have a chance to know her, get to know her, go to a meeting that she's conducting or going to attend, it will be worth your while to just be in her presence. She is a terrific woman. We celebrated, this was so awesome, the retirement of Daryl Darling. Now, I don't know Daryl, but I clapped very loudly for him because he was retiring after 66 years in the ministry. Who does anything for 66 years? Daryl was a minister that long. Isn't that beautiful? We also celebrated Jim Kearns. We clapped for him, too, but he wasn't quite as long. And Marty Murdoch was part of all the retirement festivities for everyone, because so, he's the president of the retired minister, so that was really fun to see him, you know, working. Another minister, Alfred Harris, a certified lay minister, told us, the image of God and Jesus 
Is the image in the mirror? Got it? And he said, denying the Christ in you is a silly way to live. And he wanted us to be open to and be humbled by and amazed at what God can do. Don't we see that in action every day? Now, most of you probably know already, but I just learned this a couple of years ago, that the mission of the United Methodist Church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Sounds like a big job, doesn't it? Well, Gwen Bortner, the Central Valley District lay leader, talked to us about this, and she said, don't be overwhelmed by this, but trust in God. Let God lead the way for us. It's not my job or your job to make the conversion of those we meet. It's just my job and your job to tell your story, to tell my story, you to tell your story. We also got to be with Paul Jeffrey. There was a special luncheon in his honor. He showed a beautiful movie that he'd put together of his recent travels and the people that he's met and worked with. And the one real takeaway I had from him was open up to the blessings the refugees have for us. His pictures told the story, his words told the story, and it was really a, a moving time together. But besides hearing pithy comments, I applauded for Jane and David Schlager upon their retirement. Wasn't that cool? <laughs> and Jane also received an award at annual conference. It was the Francis Asbury Award for Campus Ministry. And the man presenting the award to her said that he had been moved by her passion, wisdom, and deep discerning faith. Doesn't that sound like Jane Schlager? <laughs> Is Evelyn here? There you are, honey. We were so proud of her. <laughs> and she looked beautiful. She looked so healthy. It was just lovely to see the two of them. And at their retirement, they gave each other a little kiss. It was so darling, like, hey, we're starting a new chapter. It just felt like the family being together, you know? It was lovely. So anyway, then the next uh, uh, award was the Bishop um, Warner H. Brown Jr. Award. And it was presented to two people, Greg Berquist and Sam Yun. Now, we don't know Sam, but we do know Greg. And we really cheered for him. And those, this award was for their leadership systems development. Sounds a little dry, but it was, is, has been a very important part of our leadership training and leadership work that um, the person giving the award said has moved us, the conference, from leadership from program to leadership as a process. And last but not least was the ordination worship service. This is always, or for the last two years anyway, my time there, uh, it has been the most important part of the whole week. And, and um, if you ever have a chance just to even go to the ordination service, it's really worth it. It was a breathtaking time, breathtaking in its pageantry and moving in its spiritual importance. We have come to know Matt Peterson, who's pastor over at the Sonoma Church. And after he was ordained, the look on his face, well, made me cry with excitement for him because he, you could tell by his face that he knew, the smile just told us everything that he knew he had answered, God's call for him. 
What an exciting, important time. It was just, it was unbelievable. And we thought that was going to be the highlight, but they just kept coming. <laughs> we celebrated with, now, Pastor Sokovia, if I don't get the name right, you can correct us later, okay? T. Tikiko Lesuma was the fir, is the first Fijian ordained elder in the United Methodist Church. And we got to witness that. Isn't it exciting? We were so happy for him to meet him. What a wonderful person and great ideas of, of how the Polanis and the Fijians can work together. And um, it, was, it was a really exciting time and celebration for him. And he is now the pastor at Sacramento Hope UMC. And then, <laughs> this is going to knock your socks off, the Queen of Tonga was present at the ordination service. She was there to witness the ordination of Lamanu Ika. Again, excuse me if I'm not correct on that pronunciation, but a wonderful woman who is now the pastor of the Martinez UMC. So we had royalty with us as well as all these big shot bishops and everybody who was around. The, um, the president of the Methodist Church in Fiji was there. And so we had, well, it was just a fabulous evening, wonderful, wonderful time. Anyway, all of their stories and my story and your stories do matter, but only if they're told. So I'm really waiting and interested to hear yours. And thanks for listening. So as Peg said, annual conference session is a four-day gathering of over 100 members, clergy and lay, from the 360 churches in the California Nevada Conference. It's a time of worship, celebration, song, remembrance, recognition, prayer, and renewal. It's a time to embrace why and how we are the church. It's a time to renew old acquaintances. We saw Chris Marshall and caught up a little bit with what she's doing and her with us. And we had dinner one evening with Joe Major. It's also a time for making new acquaintances. This year, we met Bishop Minerva Carcano as, in her role as presiding bishop. In her address to the assembly, she laid out her priorities and encouraged all of us as churches and individuals to work on them in the coming year. They are ministering to all people, but giving special emphasis to ministry among the marginalized, the poor, the immigrant, and young people. To work in our circuits to renew established congregations and continue planting new places for new people. And to align our ministries with the four areas of focus of the United Methodist Church. Now, just in case you don't have those four areas of focus on the tip of your tongue, I looked them up for us. They are engaging in ministry with the poor, improving global health, developing principled Christian leaders, and creating new and renewed congregations. Bishop Carcano also outlined some concerns to address. Some of these concerns may not be entirely foreign to us as a congregation. One is decline in membership. The last year of membership growth in our conference was 1992. The Western jurisdiction has the largest population of any jurisdiction, but the smallest church membership. Stewardship. We are not a tithing people. Our present district structure. Four districts in our conference are insufficient to meet our ministry demands and opportunities. And inclusiveness. She referred to the Judicial Council decision regarding Bishop Karen Olivito and said, the call to set apart ministry is a call to all God's children without exclusion. 
In considering the concern regarding our district structure, the annual conference session approved a recommendation from the Bishop's Cabinet to create a fifth district in our conference. I know people were talking at one time we had seven, but uh, anyway, in essence, it reconfigures the previous Bridges and El Camino Real districts, each containing roughly 90 churches into three districts, each containing roughly 60 churches. In doing so, the current circuits remained intact. We are now in the possibly to be renamed Sacramento district, and Schuyler Rhodes remains our district superintendent. Our circuit of the nine churches in Sonoma County is unchanged. The goal of this realignment is to strengthen our work with local churches and communities of faith and enable us to focus on beginning new places of ministry in areas where populations are growing. Restarting congregations where a new start would bring vitality to the work God calls us to and strengthening well-established churches that are, com that are committed to taking the next step in their spiritual growth, stewardship commitment, and in welcoming others to know, love, and serve Christ Jesus. We met Aaron Hawkins, General Secretary of the General Commission on Religion and Race, who was our keynote speaker and gave three keynote speeches. Her talks focused successively on my story, our story, and God's story. Here's just a couple excerpts from what she had to say to us. We imprison each other with our stories about who you are and what you should believe. And in the process, we imprison ourselves. You imprison yourself and others when you think that there's only one story that defines you. We have the power to write and rewrite our stories. I may not have all the answers, but I got a guy. We have a song. I serve a living savior. He's here with me today. God's story is one of hope. God is always with us. We can be God's agents. We can hear the cries of the suffering and minister to them to give them hope. Where God leads us, let us follow. We also met Brian Adkins, pastor of Open Door UMC in Richmond, and one of the 32 members of the Bishop's Commission on a Way Forward. And Peg and I had an extended conversation with him late one evening, in fact, slightly into the next morning. The church he serves is about three blocks from where I grew up. So we talked about Richmond then and now, and his church, and his monitoring of the local school board, and his surprise at being named to the Bishop's Commission. The Commission's task is, quote, to do a complete examination and possible revision of every paragraph of the Book of Discipline concerning human sexuality and explore options that help to maintain and strengthen the unity of the church, end quote. That work is due to be completed approximately a year from now. The Commission's report will be considered as the sole item of business at a special general conference of the United Methodist Church in late February 2019. Conferences have the option of sending the delegations from the previous regular general conference to any special general conferences or electing new delegations. Our conference, apparently pretty much alone in uh, all conferences in the US, voted to elect a new delegation to the Special General Conference. And those people will be elected at next year's annual conference session. I close with this, which I found in my notes, but I had no attribution, I have no idea who said it. We have a story to share, but we don't know how to share it. May God grant us the ability and the courage to testify to love by sharing our stories, individual and collective, that we may make disciples of Christ for the transformation of the world. Please join me in prayer.
Lord, we thank you for the many ways in which we are connected to a worldwide movement. We pray for your blessings upon our church and upon others as we seek to fulfill your mission. Inspire the rest of our worship now as we worship together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to ask Elizabeth, I think, to come down and share the children's time. The children want to come forward at this time. We'd like to welcome you. And Elizabeth has a brief moment with you. Good morning. Good morning. So speaking of sharing stories, I'm going to share a story. Good morning, Cordelia. Come on up, guys. I'm going to share a story of um, my friend Janet. Most of us know her. She's our bookkeeper extraordinaire for the church. She's also an avid runner. And she, even yesterday, ran a triathlon, run her best time, best swim, best bike, best everything. So it's her personal best. So, but what I wanted to share about, even though she's not here today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a stand-in friend here. This is Jordan, my son. He's going to help and uh, show us some of the things that Janet does when she's running. So, why don't you go ahead and show him first. So, I just want you to go as fast as you can down the aisle and right back to us. Fast as you can. Ready? Go, 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 go. Woo, woo. All right. See that speed. All right. Come on back. Come on back. Quick. Good job. All right, focus, energy. I saw smiles on his face. And that's what happens when she runs too. She does running to be out with God. She has told me that on more than one occasion. She loves to be out in nature. She loves to be in creation. She loves to be free, to be able to think whatever she wants to think, to give praise. And she does that all just because it's, it fills her up. So there are things that might be a little bit challenging when she does that. What happens if she's, let's see. Jordan, would you stand up for a second? So she's getting ready to go on a run, and the dog gets loose. And the dog is running, 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 and he just starts barking at everybody, and, and she's really getting nervous, and she's kind of getting tense, and oh no, what's going to happen? Is that going to get in the way of her happiness and excitement about the run? What would you think? What would you think if our dog got out? What if Shally got out? What would happen? How would you feel? Mm, sort of sad. Sort of sad. Is that going to take away from your joy? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what happens, here's another scenario. What happens if she's been at work all day and she's just really looking forward to that run, just kind of letting it all go, and then somebody calls at the very last second, she's out the door, and somebody needs a report right this minute. Is that gonna, you know, like, she's like, okay, okay, I know you need it, I'm fine, I'll take a breath, and I'll get that report out for you, right? And how is that gonna affect her run, do you think? By like taking more time, taking more time, and again, kind of making her brain not quite set on God and set on on her run, right? So I'm going to ask Miss Cordelia, can you be a helper for a minute? Can you stand up and sit on Jordan's foot? You're going to pretend that you're the dog that got away that she's really worried about. Can you sit on his foot for just a second? Hold on to his leg and sit on his foot. Okay, hold on to his leg. Maybe turn around the other way. There you go. Turn around the other way and hold on to his foot. Hold on to his leg, really. Hold on. Don't let him go. Jordan, how fast can you run now? <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> All right. Harrison, you're the report that has to be done right this second. Can you go hold on to his arm? Hmm. Uh-oh. Okay, hard. Harrison, it's, it's weighing her down. She can't do that report. Oh, my goodness. He's not getting very far. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh good. We got go. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. You can come on back. So, so how can she, if Shannon were having all these thoughts, maybe some negative emotions, maybe she's not feeling so good that day, how does she let go of those things? What can she do to let go of that? She can pray. She can pray. That's a big one. In fact, she even has a tattoo on her wrist that says, pray, pray, pray. Awesome. Can you just let all that go and show us again now how fast you can run? As fast as you can. All of those negativities and the angers and the, the worries are let go. And look what happens. 
running free with God. Let's see if we can do that this week. Let's see how we can, uh, we can put those prayers into actions. Dearest God, thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be free in you. Though the world might give us things to hold us down, pull us back, make it hard to move sometimes, we know that in you, we can run free. In your name we pray. Amen.
Good morning. Our scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 139, the inescapable God, verses 1 through 18. (coughs) O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Shoal, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. May the Lord bless our study of this reading. And we're going to sing that song, Great is the Lord. It's number 2022 in these black songbooks. We're going to do just one verse and use Wesley's words, which sing with courage. Let's stand as we're able. Here we go. Please be seated. And let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be pleasing in your sight. You are rock and our redeemer. Amen. We continue our series on the Psalms. Today's Psalm, obviously, 139, first 18 verses. If you wanted to get to know me, uh, we just met, you'd probably ask my name. You'd find out where I was born, or where I went to school, or where I lived, some facts like that. Uh, You might even come over, like uh, we had a a celebration yesterday at my house. My mother turns uh, 80 next month, and we had a big 80th birthday party for her yesterday, and a lot of relatives were around. And so if you were there uh, yesterday in my backyard, you might be able to observe uh, all the extended family, and you might learn something else about me right, in terms of uh, the dynamics and, oh, that's where Blake gets that, or that's why he thinks that way. You could see it in the larger extended family. And, 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 but then more when you get to know somebody, you want to know kind of what, what's their character like, what are their attributes that characterize their life, and you get to know that. Same is true with God, really. Uh, with God, we kind of get to know what God has done in the scriptures from the beginning until now, we, but also we want to know what are God's attributes. And what kind of ways that reflect God's character. 
And the psalmist reflects really on three of God's characters in this psalm. The first is that God is all-knowing. All-knowing. God knows everything. There's nothing that God does not know. Everything about everything in the universe, God knows. And so in the background of this psalm is the reflection on God's attribute of being a God who knows everything. Secondly, it talks about a God who is everywhere present. There is nowhere you can go in the universe and God is not present. And thirdly, that God is all-powerful. God just has to say, let there be, and there is. That God's power and God's presence accompanies all of life. Now you can look at the psalm that way and gain a lot from looking at it as a reflection on God's power, God's presence everywhere, and, and God's knowledge of everything. But there's a better way to read it, and the way the, psalm, uh, the psalmist kind of outlined it. And that is, not only is God all-knowing, but God knows you. God knows you, and God knows me. God knows everything about you. There's nothing about your life. There's nothing about your actions. There's nothing about your thoughts that God does not know nor remember. <laughs> and how does that make you feel? Uh-oh. <laughs> you know, we hide a lot from other people, some things in our life. But more importantly, we hide a lot of things from ourselves. We really do. And maturity is often about just being able to acknowledge the, all the things about ourselves that are true, the good and the bad. Well, God knows it all, and in light of that, the psalmist ends up by saying, uh, after, uh, at that first section, he says, as he, as he reflects on God's knowledge of him, how he searched me and know me and know everything about me, he says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. I cannot attain it. God knows all of that, and yet God is still a God who is a good God and a loving God and a merciful God. And the psalmist rests in that knowledge that even though God knows everything about him, God uh, is a loving God, a merciful God, a forgiving God. And so the thought of that to him is, that's a wonderful thought. It's not a scary thought or, oh my, I'm going to be judged. It's, it's so wonderful that God knows me completely and loves me and sent Jesus to be born, to suffer, to die, to reveal my love for you. It's a wonderful thought when you really get it. A transformative thought. You are known by God. Not only is God everywhere present, but God accompanies you everywhere. Everywhere. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee? If I go to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I go to the othermost parts of the sea, even there, your hands shall lead me and your, your path shall be there. You can't, you can't escape God. <laughs> God is everywhere. And there are times in our life when we awaken to that fact. Maybe times of worship. Maybe times of personal prayer at home. Maybe times of great crisis in our life when we know we're in over our heads and we cry out to God and we, we awaken to God's presence. But God is everywhere present. God is present everywhere, always, at all times. And there's no time in your life or no experience you're having in life in which God is not present, whether you feel it or not. God is present. And so part of coming alive is awakening to God's presence everywhere. We come in here and we have worship, we have baptism, we have communion, we have special times in which we're awakening to God's presence. But the fact is, is that what makes something sacred is that God is present there, not the thing we're doing. Which means if God's everywhere, everything's sacred if you awaken to that potential because God is present. You may not feel sometimes that God is present, but God is. I've recently been through a time in my life in which I felt very spiritually dry. But just because I wasn't experiencing or feeling God's presence doesn't mean that God wasn't present. God is always present, no matter what. Whether you or I perceive it or not, God is present, and God is acting in our lives, always. You can count it by faith. No matter if you feel it or not, you can depend on it and count on it that God is acting, and you can trust in that, whether you feel it or not, because God's everywhere present. God is also all-powerful. 
which means that God has created you and sustained you and me. Not just that God is powerful to say, let there be light and there's light, but God created you and God created me. You are, it says, fearfully and wonderfully made. You might translate that personally. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I want you to actually say that with me. Will you do that? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Why? Because God created you. And you are of infinite value and worth. Why? Not because of what you have done, what you failed to do, because you are created in the image of God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's a statement about God more than is it a statement about you. So don't anyone ever tell you anything different. People go their whole lives having a lousy self-image or perception of themselves. And that's often why they get into trouble. They sabotage their own lives because they believe what people tell them about themselves or they believe what they think of themselves. Unworthy, not good, not worthy enough. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are created by God and sustained by God. You are of infinite value and worth. That's the fact. That's the good news. Don't let anybody tell you anything different. In a minute, when we baptize Declan and Cullen, we, we, we proclaim that. They are of value because of God's creation of them and sustaining of them. Yes, God's all-knowing, but God knows you. Yes, God is everywhere present, but God is accompanying you in every step of your life. Yes, God is all-powerful, creator of heaven and earth, but God has created and sustains you. God is inescapable. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing one verse of number 2218 as we invite the family forward to prepare for baptism. Jeremy and Kristen Kerrigan, and you brought some family with you or some friends, right? You want to mention who's here with you today? My parents. Where are your parents? Wave at us. <laughs> Welcome. And my aunt and uncle and cousin. Oh, very good. Welcome, all of you. And my brother's yes. over here, and my sister's getting Cordelia. Very good. Yeah. So we'll <laughs> delay a minute here while she's getting it. <laughs> if you all will uh, take out the hymnal and turn to page uh, 39 in your hymnal, we will... And, uh, We'll share in the, in, the, in the service together. It's our privilege, uh, and uh, here she comes. It's our privilege to share in this service of holy baptism with both of your kids here, and uh, what, a, what a privilege we share in that. On the bottom of 39, you can follow along with me. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated to Christ's holy church, incorporated into God's mighty acts of, of salvation, and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gifts offered to us without price. On page 40, we have these questions to ask of the parents, and then we all have a chance to renew our faith in a few moments as, as well.
We've got you. <laughs> Just turn this way. Nobody will know. There we go. <laughs> Now we're in the right position, see? <laughs> Very good. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If you do, say, I do. I do. And do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If you do, say, I do. I do. And do you confess Christ as your Savior and Lord and put your whole trust in His grace? and promise to serve him in union with the church, which Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races. If you do, say, I do. I do. And finally, will you nurture these children in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves and profess their faith openly and to lead a Christian life. If you will, say, I will. I will. And all of us, do you as Christ's body of the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. And will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with the community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for Declan and Cullen and their baptism here this day. We thank you for Christ who come into our lives and into their lives. We affirm that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know them. You've called them into this life and made them into this life, and you've granted them this family, and we pray your blessings upon each of them. Bless this water now, Lord, and may he receive it, that they might always walk in your grace. Awake, be awake to your love and live faithfully with you. We ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you give me Declan first? You going to come to me? Maybe? Yes, of course you will. Declan, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God bless you, Declan. May your, the Spirit of God always be present in your life. And may you know that you are loved now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He's content right here. God bless you. Call him. Yeah. You might have daddy hold you, but not. <laughs> there you go. Come on, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God's Holy Spirit be within you that you might always know you're a child of God and God's grace and blessing might lead you all the days of your life. Thanks be to God. Amen. There you go. There you go. He'll turn and face the congregation. If you'll turn with me all to page 38. Number 16, come in commendation and welcome at the bottom. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called you into eternal glory in Christ, established and strengthened you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace now and always. Thanks be to God. Amen. One second. We have a couple of quilts that have been made uh, for them. This one was made by Wilma Thompson. It says, God loves you. Your church family welcomes you. This is quilted with love in every stitch by the Peacemakers, P-I-E-C-E, -E, of First United Methodist Church in Santa Rosa. And this one was stitched by uh, Mary Grand George. So I'll present this to you guys as well. 
Let's welcome them. God bless you guys. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Pastor Scope. As we invite Pastor Sokove to lead us in our prayers this morning, I want to uh, bring to your attention the news we got uh, just the other day of Joanne Emery Knight's discovery of a brain tumor. It was, came as a surprise to many of us. She's obviously a young woman who we didn't expect knew such as this, and neither did she. She's at Memorial uh, receiving calls and visits and in great spirit, but uh, they want to get in and, and deal with it tomorrow morning. So she, we're going to lift her up in our prayers, especially as she goes into this emergency surgery and for Eric as well, her husband, to be supportive of her. So hold on to Joanne Emery Knight in your prayers this morning. Thank you. Let us turn our hearts as we command our brothers and sisters to the hands of Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for giving us this beautiful day. The day that we can come together as brothers and sisters, as a family, to worship you. And we thank you for your presence this morning. And we believe that you are God, a great God. The God that we always look to in times of difficulties and troubles in times of sickness and we thank you Lord that you are here with us this morning we do pray for our sister she's in the hospital we pray for her this morning pray for your healing touch pray that you may continue to bless her and bless the doctors and nurses those who are in the hospital that you may use them mightily to be the source of healing to her this morning. We also thank you for our brothers and sisters. We have a list of names with us. We think of them in our prayers. Those who are in need, those who are sick, those who are downhearted, we pray, Lord, Pray for your peace to be upon them today. Those who are out in the street, the homeless, we also commend their lives to you, O oh Father. Bless them, O oh Lord. Pray for our nation. Pray for the president. And all those who are in the top position of this nation, the other decision makers of this nation. We pray for them, O oh Lord. For the people that we may bind together and work together, we pray that you may continue to go with us and be with us so that we may feel your presence that give us power and give us wisdom and love. We also think of our church congregation members. We pray, Lord, that you may continue to bless each and every one of us, our families. The needs of this church we also commend into your hands this morning. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Loving God, it's in thanksgiving that we offer these gifts and ourselves to you. We are grateful that we are known by you, you're everywhere present, and you are our creator. We offer our prayers through thanks, of thanks through Jesus Christ and pray as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. gather to close on the first and last verses of this Psalm 139, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.